Schooling apocalypse, humanity under attack, is all about the summary of the big lies to introduce you to how education and schooling has affected us. The first part of the screen you'll see that what I've got on the right hand side is the fake matrix version of what we used to have and we have every right to expect but we've been scammed out of. Schooling is just one of the many, many scams. Society is riddled with corruption and scamming. It's all fake, folks, including your best friends. And your family members. We're finding out that your mother is not really your mother. She's just the woman that gave birth to you. That doesn't make a mother. Except in the Matrix. Parents. The point is that we have to be prepared for everything to be exposed. No exceptions. So I'm here to expose, and I've done it on previous occasions, the justice system, which is fake law, commercial law. We're not commercial beings, we're natural, living, breathing beings. The healthcare system is a fake system for fake people. And I'm gonna use deliberately strong language because we, we're running out of time to be conciliatory, polite, and diplomatic. We don't have the time. Because you're either with us or you're going to take more jabs and you're off planet. Religion. Fake. We used to have faith and some of us still do, but religion came along to replace it. Control mechanisms. Scientism. With the birth of humanism, humanism morphed into scientism. A bit more about that later. And that's the religion of science. That's having a fake faith in science, particularly computer-modelled science. Food, and now they're actually 3D printing food. So the more they do, the more obvious it is what they have been doing for a long time. Whereas what we need is nutrition, and a lot of the people walking around who look overfed, technically obese, are actually malnourished. Obesity is malnourishment, amongst other things. My friend Clive DeCarl came out with a beautiful line the other day. He asked Brian Gerrish on UK Column, why would I go to a supermarket to buy food? This is where we are, folks. In New York, 40 years ago, in an American supermarket, and gobsmacked that there was nothing fresh. It was all packaged back then. 40 years ago, over 40 years ago. Money was abolished 100 years ago. People still think it still exists. We are the value. I'm not going to go into that, although it will get a mention later on today. Jobs. That's something you do when you don't have a purpose. Knowledge. They fill you with knowledge to send your brain into crisis and keep you away from a true, fulfilled life so you never develop experience and wisdom. Wisdom comes from experience. It's applied knowledge, applied from having a life. When I left the legal profession 40 years ago nearly, my aim was to go out and have a life, rather than sit behind a desk and live life vicariously through other people. Authority came along Man-made authority came along to replace God. More about that later, because if it's highlighted, then it's going to be covered in more depth later today. Status came along to replace value, inner value, self-worth connected to purpose. Schooling on the right came along to replace self-education. Isaac Asimov, which I will quote him later, all education is self-education. Nobody can teach you anything. You can only learn from doing, from trying out. You can't learn French from listening to a French teacher talk about how to construct a phrase. You have to go out there, listen to it, apply it and speak it. Schooling myths. So now we'll dive into some myths. Again, there's a preamble. This is just part one. Schooling myth number one. We go to school to be educated. That's a myth. If you break down the word education, educare from the Latin to draw out, schooling now, which is essentially just indoctrination, it's warehousing, is not about drawing out. Although what they do at many schools is they 
print off the most noble aims and objectives. And this is what the United Nations do, this is what the WHO do, this is what all the cabal do. They use words in such a way to convince you that their aims are noble. But that's the grand deceiver. If someone who you hardly know is being sweet to you, for no apparent reason, that's called love bombing. So we get love bombed in order to participate in school, big pharma advertising, we get love bombed to participate. As soon as we participate, we get discarded. We're only of potential value before we enter into their arena. As soon as we're in, we become non-existent because they're just profiteering from our ignorance and fear. Education and schooling is no exception. All those noble aims that we've been indoctrinated into believing make us forget what happened to us at school and continue to send our boys and girls to school as if it's the most natural thing in the world. And we'll pull that apart in more detail and more depth later on. Schooling myth number two, we go to school to be socialised. No, you go to school to be bullied and to be shaped into a one-size-fits-all specimen that will fit the system or the systemic model. Now, there are elite schools where they are grooming boys and girls to be leaders. So I'm more referring to the mainstream schools where the average boy or girl go, because the average boy or girl is going to be cut off from being able to climb too high. You do get the odd exception. Some people are just irrepressible. But most boys and girls are the victim of a system which is essentially class-based. So they decide who the elite is and they give them the best possible education, including the trivium and quadrivium. That means by the age of seven, or certainly not long after, you are in a position to, and this is Plato's trivium and quadrivium, you are in a position to learn anything any time in any way. So you become what's called an autodidact. That's only available at elite schools. Everybody else is given crumbs and placebos. And the placebos are the certificates of having passed whatever exam they've given you to pass. That's placebo. has no value. But if you think it has a value, then it has some value. But it has no actual value. As soon as you've finished that exam, it's all forgotten, including all the information that you had to cram into your head to pass the test. Virtually all the tests we ever do are placebos. School myth number three, schooling is compulsory. Not in this country, it isn't. It is in certain parts of the world, Germany. If you don't send your boys and girls to school, you can get a visit from the police. But in this country, it is not compulsory. And we are going to make sure that it never becomes compulsory. But having said that, if you know your way around the law, if you know true law, then you can just go private and keep your boys and girls in the private, out of the public commercial arena. I'm not particularly here to discuss that today. That's for another day, and it has been covered in other talks. So schooling is certainly not compulsory. Schooling myth four, we cannot progress without it. Well, it's very sad if you think that you have to go to school to progress in life, because Richard Branson didn't, and there's a few other massive names. All those huge names. A lot of people, in order to realise their massive dreams, have to drop out of school in order to crack on with realising their dreams. So the schooling process is a retardation process, it's a limitation process. Again, we'll come to that more in detail later. Here's some food for thought. We have the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Birds. But there's no Royal Society to Prevent Cruelty to Children, it's the National Society. Interesting. Draw your own conclusions. Who advocates for children? Correct. Nobody. To whom do teachers owe allegiance? Well, we could create all kinds of answers to that one, but I would say ultimately the banks. 
because they're there to pay the mortgage. To whom do they owe the mortgage? The banks. So that's to whom teachers owe allegiance. There's some allegiance owed to the head because they're in a, there is a military system with up and down hierarchy, yeah? So you could say, well, I owe my allegiance to my line manager. They owe their allegiance to their general manager. It's military, but we're on board a ship. We all have skippers. What are teachers doing when they put you through daily and even lesson by lesson registration? This is just a reiteration of something that I have covered in more depth in the past. What they are doing is they are conditioning you to be the legal fiction person and not the natural living boy or girl. More details in other talks. So that's what they're actually doing. Registration is a nonsense. It's just fake. What's all that about? In my book, School No Place for Children, there's a story of a boy who is being asked to say yes when the teacher calls his name out. And he remains silent three or four times. In the end, she screams at him. I've called your name out four times. Why don't you answer? And like a true, intelligent young man, he was about seven at the time, he said, well, you can see I'm here, miss. And this generation in particular, but the last few generations, have developed this intelligence that we didn't have, this common sense, and they're the ones that are going to save humanity because they're looking at the teacher as if he or she is a moron. And that's the attitude that we need from the kids now. I call it gentle, respectful, contempt. That's the attitude that we need. For the police, for agents, any other agents, gentle, respectful, contempt. And that is what I want to see in the boys and girls coming through. No violence, no need for violence, no need for disrespect but there's a huge need for contempt.